Hello and welcome back. Today on the bench we have two cult government models and uh, the first one is from 1942 when production of the cult government model was suspended and this one is from uh, early post-war production 1946 1947 somewhere in that area and uh, we're going to discuss some of the changes that took place to the cult government model after World War II. Now, um, as I said, the uh, government model ceased production in 1942, and that was at approximately serial number 215,083, and began production again in 1946, and that would have been October of 46, at uh, 220. Thousand and one. Now, bluing was the most significant change or the most noticeable change that was done between 1942 to 1946. The gas fired oven bluing of the pre war models now was changed to a chemical bluing called Black Magic. Now, that was not a cult process, that was uh, owned by the Mitchell Bradford Company of Connecticut. That was their trademarked bluing process. Now, the Schwartz safety that we saw introduced in the late 30s was now eliminated at this point. Uh, the lanyard loop was eliminated, and um, in 1949, they moved the C prefix on the uh, commercial government models from being a prefix to being a suffix. So you'll see that change also in those early post-war models. Now, this one right here is only 65 digits from the last one produced, so that's pretty high in production. You can see here it still has the walnut grips on it, and this one here happens to have, which I found really nice, some uh, beautiful checkering down to the front strap there, but that's, uh, that's just me. I like those little things like that. But anyway, um, that one's only 65 digits from the last one produced in 1942 and this one's 667 digits from the first one when uh, production resumed in 1946. So you can see here a uh, very early post-war one. Now the post-war government model, this one is made from uh, surplus 1911A1 parts that were in various stages of production at the end of World War II and what happened was when victory over Japan occurred on September 2nd, 1945, government contracts were virtually canceled overnight, and that left many parts in various stages of production. Now, after World War I, uh, the government went around and reclaimed all these parts, as well as all the tooling that they owned. Well, this time they left the parts and just reclaimed the tooling, so Colt use those parts to get back into production. And the lucky thing for Colt was they owned all their pistol tooling, so they were able to get back into uh, manufacturing pistols relatively quickly for the uh, commercial mar market. Now, we'll go ahead and start to take a look at some of the things here on this post-war production model. And one of the first things you'll notice on this one is it doesn't have government model stamped above the serial number. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the slide here. We have the commercial roll mark, the Colt, here on the side, and you can see the rampant Colt there. And then we'll flip it over, and this one has the military slide markings on it, of uh, circa 1945 or somewhere in that area. And uh, anyway, the, some of the other noticeable things on this too is it has a uh, World War II production uh, mainspring housing here still has the lanyard loop and then we also have the military plastic grips and then uh, some of the other things that were done with these is as time went on and uh, they started producing the parts and they had exhausted all the uh, remaining surplus parts from World War II the uh, slide for example here happens to have a recoil plate in it and uh, Remington Rand had uh, developed the Oz tempering process during World War II as an effort to uh, contribute to the war effort. And Remington Rand, being the perfectionist they were, uh, wanted to do everything they could to produce the best pistol they could, lowest price, 
highest quality and make any improvements to the design that they could, uh, they were able to uh, contribute the Oz tempering uh, technique to the pistol production. So Colt adopted that after World War II. Now when they started to make their own slides again that were not surplus, that recoil plate of course was gone due to this new manufacturing process. So there were a lot of other little changes that occurred to the small parts on these pistols as time went on. I'm not going to get into all those right now. They would just take way too long to explain them all. So as I come across examples in some uh, future videos, I'll go through some of those changes. But for those of you that are uh, government model uh, aficionados, uh, I thought you might like to see these two. One from World War II and one from just shortly thereafter. Alright, so that's going to conclude tonight's video. I thank everybody for tuning in and watching, and have a great night.